So when I go in to, to look for a separate self in the body, I can never find any separate self in there. There's nobody there. Uh, so it's got to be um, consciousness, uh, consciousness. There's nobody there. Uh, but the next step would be to like find something that, so that's an old idea, right? Of being a separate self inside a body at the mercy of a body. The body can make you sick, it can kill you, et cetera. And we don't know what happens after that. It's the, uh, the, the prevailing view in society, right? So I can, I can very easily go in and say, okay, there's absolutely no, no separate person in here. Uh, so it's something else. I don't know what that other, what, what that something else is. Um, I noticed the mind, and of course the mind is always wanting to know things, but there, there's like a, a, it leaves a vacuum in the sense that I don't know where to go after that. So I don't, I know there's no separate self, so it's all consciousness, but the mind, it, it, there seems to be a need for some kind of uh, wanting to know what that looks like. Mm. Can you, can you fill that in for me? Uh, let me see if I understood your question. In, 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 correct me if I'm going in the wrong direction. Uh, if if you look or when you look at your experience, you find uh, perceptions, sensations, thoughts. You see the world. You experience the body. You experience memories, and you perceive you perceive phenomena. So that's one aspect of our experience. Uh, there is also the belief that uh, I am a separate entity. So you perceive the belief, you perceive the thought that, okay, I'm a man, I'm born, which is different from perceiving the body. You perceive the bodily sensations, but that's different from perceiving I am the body. I am the body is a belief. Uh, perceiving the body is just a perception, right? You look in the mirror, you see a face, you say, okay, that's Frank's face, and it's the name of the body is Frank, and that's Frank's face. That's a perception, right? But the belief, I am Frank, that's a, that's a thought, which is a belief, right? So there, there's a difference between, in our experience, between perceiving phenomena, perceiving events, perceiving thoughts, perceiving perceptions, and the belief that I am somebody, that I am this and not that, that I am Frank and I'm not Megdi, I am uh, Frank and I'm not uh, Bill, right? So that's part of our experience. So in our experience, there is the phenomenal realm, there is the belief that I am somebody, right? And then there is that which perceives, there is a reality which perceives. In other words, the thought today is Sunday, cannot up arise on its own without the knowingness of it. So there is awareness. There is awareness of the world. There is awareness of the mind. There is awareness of the body. If there is a toothache, there is awareness of the toothache, which is awareness of the body. And there is also awareness of awareness. I'm just talking about our experience. I'm not talking theoretically. So you need to double check with me if you're not getting me. I'm speaking experientially. There is awareness of awareness, meaning I'm aware that I'm aware. Yeah. Awareness of awareness. So that is, that is our experience. Now, what else is there? I, I don't know what else is there. I mean, I, I can imagine that there are blue men on the moon and that there is a god or a dragon god floating somewhere above, beyond the galaxies. But that's just imagination. Experientially, there is world body mind, meaning perceptions. There is ignorance. Ignorance is the belief that I am somebody. Because there is no reality to I am somebody outside of the belief that I am somebody. In other words, There is a body-mind named Magdi, which appears within consciousness. But then there is a belief that I am Magdi. Now that is 
unsubstantiated. There is no support, nothing that supports this belief. It is strictly a belief. So when you say that, when you shared with me a minute ago, that you did not find a separate self, you did not find a me, what you are sharing with me is that you did not find any evidence that actually there is somebody named Magdi or there is somebody named Frank. You found a body named Frank, yes, but you did not find there is somebody, like an entity, uh, named Frank. And I agree with you, because the belief is just unsubstantiated, like the belief that the earth is flat is just a belief. And so I want to see if I understood your question. You mentioned but something else. What, what do you mean by something else? What do you... What do you I don't know if I really got your question. Okay, so as, as you're talking, Maggie, it's coming to me what the answer is. It's funny how this happens. So basically, like as you're, ta you're saying, you were talking about consciousness. So I'm asking something about the body-mind. Uh, and you're right. So I know there's a body there, but I can't prove that there's a separate person here. Uh, but what's here instead? And so I, I'm realizing now that I'm trying to fill a gap in here with something to replace that, to replace the fact that there is no, so I've thought that there was somebody's like a unique person inside this body that was different than everyone else and had its own story, et cetera, et cetera. But actually that's just, a, that's just an idea. That's just a story. Yes. Um, it's not, it's not reality. So I was trying to replace that with something else, but what I'm realizing now is I can just go to just know that it's awareness, knowing of being aware of this. That's what I can do replace that with. This is what I, Am I right there? Am I, am I on the right track? Yes, awareness is the perceiving element, the knowing element that knows the world, body, mind. It knows its creation. It, it creates and perceives. And at the same time, it knows that it is, and it knows that it is the knowing element. That's, that's consciousness. That's awareness. Now, mm -hmm. the mind is more like as a metaphor would be the images on the screen. So there is the screen, uh, and on the screen there are all sorts of images. There is, uh, there are memories, thoughts, Frank's thoughts, and Magdi's thoughts and perceptions are different. The mind is different. The images on the screen are different. But that which knows the images and that which is and knows that it is is the is consciousness and when you contemplate consciousness you don't find that there are different consciousnesses you don't find there is a consciousness named Magdi and a consciousness named Frank you don't you find that there are images named Magdi and images named Frank a certain body mind is named Magdi a certain uh, perception called Magdi's house and the different perceptions named Frank's body and different perception named Frank's car or Frank's, Frank's house. You do find that there are distinctions and differences in terms of the images on the screen, but you do not find that there is consciousness A and consciousness B. Now, for the people who are doubting that or questioning that, I invite you to turn your attention to consciousness right now. Right now, you are conscious. In other words, right now, consciousness is, a, is your direct experience. And once you come to the understanding that consciousness, consciousness is your direct experience, meaning the reality which perceives there is a reality which perceives, and that reality is is aware and conscious, what we refer to as consciousness. And it is also what we refer to as I, I perceive. You can ask yourself, experientially, do I experience a beginning and ending to my consciousness? Because if the answer is yes, I am... A experiencing a beginning and an ending to my consciousness, that may lead me to conclude that there is another consciousness that may start at the end of my consciousness, 
which is different from my consciousness, which could be Frank's consciousness. But if, when I ask myself the question, do I experience a beginning or an ending to my consciousness? Or when I ask myself, do I experience a location of my consciousness? If the answer is no, I don't, then I could not conclude that therefore there is another consciousness somewhere else which differs from my consciousness because experientially I'm not finding a beginning and an ending to my consciousness. You follow what I'm saying, Frank? Uh, oh, yeah, totally. Totally, Maggie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so this, is, this is an experiment we need to conduct. Nobody can conduct it for us. We have to conduct it ourselves. We have to ask ourselves, you know, is my consciousness, meaning the reality which perceives right now, not an idea about consciousness, experientially, is that consciousness phenomenal? Because anything phenomenal is limited. And if I come to the conclusion, wait, no, I don't have any evidence experientially that consciousness is phenomenal. And I can just stay with that because that In is... Fact, it, well, if I, if I was, sorry to cut you off, I was, I heard something the other day. Uh, so anything that we see, is this, would this be a correct statement to say that anything that we see is not real, but it's the seeing of those things that's real? That, that's the, actually the only thing that's absolutely real is the seeing of what we see? It depends how that? you define reality. Okay. How do you define reality? There is, there are different schools. There is a school that defines reality as being phenomenal that the world is real, that matter is real, you know, the, the materialist. And there are people who define the mind as real, that thoughts are real, that everything we perceive is mind-like. Like in other words, when I perceive the world, I'm actually perceiving a mind, a mind, a mind image, it's mind-like. There are these two schools, you know, the, the, the idealist and the materialist schools. So it, from my perspective, okay, that which is real is consciousness. Okay. Con consciousness is real, but I would not, I would not encourage you to conclude that everything that you perceive, whether it is mind or whether it is whether it is the world, are not real, are illusion. I would say that they are real as consciousness. In other words, everything ah, yeah. is real as consciousness. Mm -hmm. The yep. mind that you experience, that you perceive, the thoughts, the creative thoughts, the memories, the, the uh, mind-like qualities that you perceive are real as consciousness. And the world that you see, the mountain, the tree, the car, the, the city, your, 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 your neighbor are real as consciousness. So we bring the reality without denying the reality of mind or the reality of, of, of the world, we bring them home to the reality of consciousness. Because that which we can always be certain of experientially is consciousness. Because if you look for the mountain, the mountain is here today, but in 20,000 years, the mountain may not be here today, uh, in 20,000 years. The, if you look at the, your mind, your creative thinking, something can happen to the brain, you can fall on your head, and all these thoughts and creative aspects of your, your mind may not be here again. But that which you can always be uh, uh, absolutely certain of, so, Maggie, one more quick thing. I know I said I was done, but so uh, when I said that um, what we see isn't real, but what, what's real is the seeing. So what you're saying is it's real, but it's only real as it's, it's real as the seeing in the sense that it's all consciousness. Uh, but it is real in that sense. It's real as, as consciousness, but not real as anything else. It's not real in the way that we see it as real, right? 
the way that we think of it. Right. It depends, it depends on the instrument of perception. Like, you know, if you're seeing yeah. something and you say, oh, wow, this mountain is, is, is real, you know, and then uh, something happened to your eyesight, God forbid, and you're looking and you, you don't see a mountain, you see, you see, uh, I don't know, some clouds. Oh, you, then you say, oh, those clouds are real, you see. Because the instrument, you know, it depends on the instrument of perception, you see. So maybe seeing, when I say seeing, I'm talking about uh, awareness, how aware yes. is seeing. Because awareness is seeing thoughts. Right. Uh, we, I mean, we, we don't see thoughts with our eyes. We see thoughts with awareness. We don't see, uh, we don't see imagination or memories uh, with the eyes. We see that with awareness, right? So th I think that's what I was saying. Uh, I uh, think that's what I was, when I said uh, seeing, that's what I meant. Thanks. Uh, uh, anyway, I'll pass you. Thanks. Awareness is the perceiving aspect or the knowingness aspect of consciousness, of reality. In other words, one of the attributes of reality, of being, is awareness. So it is, it is, reality takes on the form of perception. It is a reality which, which, or being, which perceives, you could say perceives it's always perceiving itself because there is no nothing outside. There is no out, other reality outside of the reality of being. So in terms of the conversation about awareness or perception, because we should not deny perception. We should not deny awareness. Absolutely, because it's our experience too that we perceive, we're aware, right? But given there is one reality, it is that one reality which is perceiving its own creation, itself, within itself, uh, as uh, thought, perception, sensation, mind. Because thoughts, perception, and sensation, you have to keep in mind that thought, perception, and sensations are just a classification of perception. You, fo you, you follow what I mean? In other words, yeah. there, is, there is awareness which precedes precedes as a way of speaking precedes the classification right? of course of course there is no precedence because there is no time it's 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 the formless which organizes itself as form and, and as mind one could ask why and we say why not <laughs> it's infinite it is god's play you say god's play and it's and it's fascinating for us all right, because we actually enjoy, we enjoy perceptions, sensations, thoughts, interactions, the life, creation, creativity, climbing the mountains. We like climbing. There are people who climb Mount Everest. And I don't know, maybe 20 people die every day, climb uh, every year, climbing Mount Everest. They enjoy that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Maggie. Yep, they do, they do. And everybody, they die there every single year and they keep going. Okay, I'll pass. Thanks. All right.